Hey, this is Robert Lamb from Stuff to Blow Your Mind. Uh, as we look into the future of, of, of medicine and the future of healthcare, uh, we obviously end up looking at nanotechnology. I mean, nano, nanotechnology is, is one of those fields that just sort of gets looped into, into any far future uh, gaze at one point or another. When we think of nano healthcare um, and you know, nanotechnology and healthcare coming together, it's easy to sort of get lost in these visions of like fantastic voyage, you know, the old uh, Isaac Asimov uh, idea of a miniaturized, miniaturized technology coursing through the bloodstream. Stream. And it's really, uh, it's, it's better if you think of it in terms of, uh, of uh, more of a bottom up as opposed to a top down. Um, system because we're, uh, nanotechnology is essentially uh, involved with the, the building of things at the smallest level. Um, the smaller the building block, the more complex the model can be, the more power, the more control you have over the model. Uh, I like to think of um, the building blocks you had as a kid. You might remember having large clunky blocks about like this. If you tried to build an airplane out of that, you could only make that airplane so detailed, right? And it's still going to look like a lump of blocks build it out of small blocks like that big and you can make a pretty detailed model you know say it's about the size of a, a kitchen table or something so the smaller the blocks the more power the more control the more detail and that's essentially what nanotechnology is all about so how does that um, affect our future healthcare? well um, medicine is a big one um, various medications both in their form and in their delivery in their form uh, we're looking at ways to use microstructures, uh, some of which are based on viruses um, and, and, and just uh, the inner workings of the human body, of course. Uh, ways to, say, join particular medications together to, uh, to customize uh, individual medication molecules and, uh, and adjust things such as solubility in the blood, um, their abil uh, the ability of uh, various medications to pass through the skin, uh, things that could not be a cream uh, previously can be made into a cream and then as far as delivery goes uh, imagine uh, you're in a situation where you need to take say a pill a month for a year um, but what if you had a pill that dissolved at a slow, much slower rate and was able to target the portion of the body that needs to be treated uh, that's some of, the, of what we're looking at with the materials of nanotechnology and, uh, and again we're talking a, about a, a very minuscule scale like uh, uh, an item that's one nanometer thick you would take a uh, hundred thousand of those next to each other to equal the thickness of a, um, a single strand of hair so tiny tiny sc uh, scales affecting uh, how molecules are behaving I think cancer treatment is a great example of where uh, nanotechnology uh, and drug del delivery will really make an impact uh, because of course when people undergo chemotherapy the uh, the, the treatment ends up affecting their whole body when you're really trying to target one particular area and that's that results in all the sickness and all the and, and all the suffering uh, but what if we could uh, target that to such a degree that it's only going after uh, the cancerous cells and then what if it was this there the, the medication was in the body acting almost a lot like a tiny doctor uh, just uh, pumping it out at the, the appropriate level another area that, uh, that there's a, there are some really interesting applications for actually in the growing of custom organs. Now, we currently have the technology to take stem cells and and use them to grow and grow them over, say, a ghost heart, which is a uh, say like a donor heart that has um, been chemically stripped of its cells. It's just the collagen remaining, or uh, the growing of certain uh, tissues over um, scaffolding. Both of, both of these are, are are reasonable up to a point, but uh, you. You know, you tend to want to not have to rely on a donor organ, uh, even if you're, you know, stripping it down and making it into a custom organ. You also, um, if you're depending on scaffolding, some of these sc the scaffolding can be a bit tricky. You're dealing with complex three-dimensional organs, right? Uh, there's, there are actually some really interesting um, um, studies that have shown that we may be able to take uh, nanoparticles uh, that are magnetically suspended, and you actually form that into a 3D uh, floating scaffolding for the uh, stem cells to grow on. Uh, so they'll grow, the stem cells will grow into the tissue that you, uh, you dictate and they're growing into this, uh, this nanotechnology um, infused 3D surface. So uh, nanotechnology is going to have a huge impact on the way we treat disease and ultimately on uh, how long we're going to be living in the future. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.